Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what I've got in front of me is High Fleet Tiamat, and they are a new one of the High Fleets. Well, at least I think they're new. They're very cool looking all the same, and quite a few of you asked when I put the question out, what would you like to see me paint next? Uh, Tiamat came up a few times, and I had genuinely never seen them before. So after grabbing a handful of paints and giving it a shot, this is what I've come up with. So eight paints. Really? Yes. <laughs> They'll all be listed in the description below. This is nice and simple. Let's get started. So as always, first things first, we're going to prime the miniature. Now with some of the other high fleets, you can play around with some of your primer colors and get slightly different effects. But with Tiamat, I've primed this with White Scar. Uh, it doesn't matter too much what white you use. If you decide to go with Army Painter or another brand that you've got your hands on, White is white is white, you know, for our purposes, just got to be white. So now what we want to do is get that nice minty sort of background to the skin. And for this, what I'm going to use is Coelia Green Shade. Now I've got quite a stiff bristled little old brush here. Uh, you could use even a, a small dry brush or something similar, uh, because I tend to find these easier for really jamming in and getting into the recesses of natural uh, miniatures, anything like marine armor and what have you, I would probably instead turn to a shade brush. But in this case, being able to really jam it in there, <laughs> it's quite handy. Now I'm going to go over everything, except when I come near the gun, I'm going to slow down and I will swap to a smaller brush to get that on there because I don't want to paint the gun itself if I can avoid it. Now if you are painting a whole bunch of these guys, you could uh, batch paint up five or six or ten at a time if you're feeling saucy and uh, once you reach that stage stop and let them dry and uh, yeah we're going to come back and do the gun in a moment. So that is as far as I've gotten with that first brush and now I'm going to swap on down to a smaller one just to fill in his hands on the gun. Now once that's thoroughly dry you can grab yourself some Magos purple and we're going to apply this over the gun itself. Now, the temptation is going to be to slow down and be quite fussy with these, but I would suggest remember that you are painting a horde army. Um, don't worry about, you know, don't sweat the little things if you end up with little blots of green or purple in the wrong place. Nobody's going to be looking at Gaunt 30's <laughs> little fingers to see if you've shaded those properly, but because I'm doing just the one here, I'm going to be a little bit more fussy. And once all of that has thoroughly dried, we're going to dry brush the miniature with some white scar. And what I've got in front of me, this is one of my little makeup brushes. It is a Lux pencil, if that helps any. Uh, but anything with nice soft bristles is going to work just fine for our purposes. Start off by dry brushing the carapace to get a feel for what you're going to leave behind. And I could probably do with a little bit more paint on my brush. But we'll start by just going over all of the skin, all of the carapace. And you'll see, as we build up that color, we get a nice smooth transition from the Coelia Green Sage, yeah, Coelia Green Shade rather, to our white. So over everything, including the gun, because we want that to be a little bit lighter. And yeah, build up your color slowly and concentrate on the skin. Now take your time to build up that color and you'll see that I've avoided the carapace after a couple of passes and concentrated more on the skin. And uh, I quite like how that turns out myself. What I'm going to do now is use Black Templar to paint in the black bits. Now, I'm using this instead of Black Legion because Black Legion covers more like a traditional sort of acrylic paint, whereas Black Templar here has a faint sort of blue-black translucency to it which to my eye looks a little bit more natural and uh, suits what I've got in mind. So I'm going to paint the gun casing with this. Then his hooves and claws. And then finally we're going to apply it to his armor plates. Now I've got here a medium shade brush for this because uh, I've taken quite good care of it and it keeps a point. What I'm going to do is start by applying it right at the front. And I find it easiest then to sort of jab under these plates and draw towards the back of the armor like so. And you'll see by not having completely covered these with white when doing the dry brush, 
we've got a little bit of that greenish tint showing through our Black Templar, which is why I'm using this instead of the Black Legion. So let's go ahead and paint over all of his armor now. Now the heavy metal team recommends ordinarily going to Lupercal Green, which is a nice rich base color, and using that to bulk out some of the green tint in the armor plates, which I don't think we're going to need. So what I have instead is Sons of Horus Green, which is basically the next green up, and one of my little dry brushes. We're going to start from the back of the armor plates and dry brush forwards. Now this won't do a huge amount at first, so take your time and build up the color. But you'll see as we pass over those areas a few times, we start to green out the, the rear half of the armor. Now you can flick from the other direction as well, because what you want to do is give this a little bit of color, but leave that nice black in the recesses. So take your time with this, because if you're just getting started, or if you're not confident with your dry brushing, it can be easy to overdo. Uh, but if you end up splashing like on their arms or what have you, don't worry, you can just go back to your white and tie that up later. But remember what I said, don't worry too much about your horde armies. Now there you'll see, by building up that color slowly, we get a nice transition from the dark recesses to our green at the edges. What we're going to do now is the final dry brush on this dude, and that is going to be a little bit of deepkin flesh, because we want that nice sickly edge to our green. So another small dry brush or something similar will do the job here. And what I'm doing is really just concentrating at the very edges. Dry brushing against the detail, so that I pick it out and I get a nice sharp edge. This one, what I'm also going to do with the, well, whenever my camera catches up with me, uh, dry brush this over the other black details too. So there is most of them finished. Now there's no painstakingly painting small thin lines, it is all just dry brushing. Definitely a technique worth practicing, because honestly, between contrast and dry brushing, I don't think there is a faction better suited to that than Tyranids. What I am going to do now, though, is go back to some of my white scar, and I'm just going to dot in the eye on his gun. We'll see why in a second. And uh, if you have got any really big, obvious points on the miniature where you've got more green than you might like, you can just get in there with a little bit of white now to tidy those up. I have here Imperial Fist, and I am going to just pop a little bit of this over that freshly whitened eye. And then while I'm doing eyes, I have here Baal Red. Now I should have done this before doing my uh, white tidy up stage, because if I make a mistake, uh, I'll be able to just clean up his cheek. Because this on camera is going to be a bit of a mission. Or it might not. Now wonderfully, I just realized I can't count. I'm not going to do nine paints, this is going to stay on eight. I'm going back to Coelia Green Shade. And what I'm going to do is these little exposed bits in the arms and what have you, just give them a fresh coat of the green shade to make them a little bit deeper. Now I learned recently these little things are supposedly spiracles, which are little splits in the surface of the exoskeleton, uh, which allow a, an organism to either breathe or to cool down. So there you go. Science fact of the day, courtesy of the Tyranids. <laughs> and then the final thing I'm going to do is just a tiny wee line of Black Templar on this eye here. Now after this point, what I'm going to do is hit it with a matte varnish. Um, I'm going to use Varnish Plus from Instar, which is my go-to for this sort of thing. But you might also like Immunitorum Varnish, if you don't mind spray varnishes. A slightly satin finish will look quite good on Tyranids too. I'll base them up, and the recipe for that will be in the description. Let's get a look at our finished miniature. And there at last, our High Fleet Tiamat Termagant, which is fun to say, <laughs> is complete. Now I really enjoyed doing this fella. It is quite similar to how High Fleet Leviathan works, with the pre-shade and then the white dry brush. Uh, but I think this is going to work for most of the light-skinned, dark-armored style Tyranids. Now a few folks asked about Behemoth, and I am going to do High Fleet Behemoth next week, 
and that's going to be quite a different method. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. As always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you very much. Your support is what makes this all possible. If you've got any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.